Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, uh, good day everyone. This is the continuation of the presentation about intro to mathematical economics and economic models. I have explained the first three topics in my last video. So the last explanation is about functions. Functions is a behavioral equation which portrays the unique relation between at least two variables. Given x and y relationship, function can be expressed uh, like this. It reads that the functional notation f is a rule by which the set x is mapped or transformed into the set y. We can also simply say that as y is a function of x, then the value of x in specific way affects the value of y. Worth noting the property of function here, however, and the illustration here may be uh, making you have a clearer understanding. A function may have a relation uh, like this, in which each x only results in one y, though y1 in this example can result from two x values. On the other hand, this mapping is not a function because one x results in two y values. Using a graph's illustration like this, we can also identify that the green curve is a function's curve while the red curve is not. In the green curve, x1 and x2 results in a single value of y. On the other hand, x3 in the red curve results in two y values, y2 and y3. Having got the idea of a function, then we may call x and y differently. Y in our case is the dependent variable of the function. It is the value of the function variable that is affected by the other variables and it has range as its possible values. X can be more than one is the independent variable. It's the argument of the function variable that affects the dependent variable and it has the so-called domain that limits its uh, possible values and accordingly will limit the range of uh, y values. Let's go back to our models again. The models, as we have observed, have the following equations. How do we identify dependent and independent variables? Remember, they are different with endogenous and exogenous variable. The first thing that we have to do is, of course, to find which equations in the model are functions. In the first model, this equation clearly not a function. In the second model, we also know that the first is an identity equation and the last one is a conditional equation. Both are not a function. So we only have equations inside the blue rectangles that are functions. It's now easy. All the variables on the left side of, the, of each equation are dependent variables. All the other variables on the right side, on the other hand, are independent variables. Worth noting two things here, however. First, we don't include the exogenous variables as independent nor dependent variables. As explained earlier in my presentation, the value of uh, exogenous variables are given, so they are so similar to constants. They won't change uh, once their magnitudes or values have been determined. Second, unlike endogenous or exogenous variables, inside a model, one variable can become both dependent and independent variables because it enters two different functions. Look at variable t in the second model. In household consumption function, t is one of the independent variables, while in tax function, t is, the in a, t is the dependent variable. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about types of uh, function. The first one is called polynomial function. Here is the common form of a polynomial function. It is mainly characterized with the unique power of its independent variables. We have the constant function with the highest power is zero. The linear function with, one, with n or the highest power is one. And here is the function's graph may look like a straight line with a certain slope. Then for the quadratic function, the n is two. And when the function is drawn, it will be parabolic with a maximum or a minimum point. 
Lastly, we have uh, cubic functions with graph illustration like this. For sure, the n is uh, 3. With n equals 4 or more, we just call the polynomial function as a degree 4th or a degree i-th uh, function. Here are the other types of uh, functions. We have uh, so-called rational and non-algebraically function. It's not that difficult to understand as you read the characteristic of the two functions here. And here are the examples of the uh, two functions. This is the summary. There are three types of function. The most commonly used is the polynomial function that can be uh, linear or nonlinear. And we may deal with one or more independent variables in the function. Uh, the function itself can be expressed in uh, numeric when indicating the value of its constant and coefficient. Or the constant and coefficient are just expressed in terms of parameters. Hence, the function becomes the parametric uh, function. Lastly, we already know that the function can be numeric and it can also be parametric. Actually, it indicates about how specific the expression of the function is. To derive a theorem, economic theorem in particular, more general form of a function that can be used in more and different contexts or situation will be necessary. For instance, market demand function may be different for different commodity. However, there must be something in common. Both functions may have the same variables, which are quantity demanded and price. Therefore, despite their different rules and magnitudes, market demand in general can be expressed as a function of price. These are the simple way to generalize the function. The first one basically is changing a numeric function into a parametric function. Look at the example here. The constant and the coefficient of the equation in the left is replaced by parameters a and b in the right equation. Similarly, we do the same in the second example. We replace the numbers with the parameters. The most general or the least specific of a function is expressed like this. In this function, we can only identify the dependent and independent variables, but we don't know exactly how the exact relation between them. Well, this is the last thing that I'm going to explain about uh, drawing a function. And here are the basics what you've got to know and so worth nothing as well first is to identify the shape of the function whether it is uh, linear or non-linear and you can see the examples of functions curve here apart from the first diagram the linear function or also the constant function functions are non-linear so by knowing the specific function ex expression we can identify the shape of the function second Sometimes it is necessary to find the cross points or the asymptote of a function. The rectangular hyperbolic function in diagram D and the logarithmic function in diagram F are called to have an asymptote. Both curves will never cross the y-axis nor even cross it. On the other hand, all the other functions have the cross point. And in a polynomial function, like in diagram A, B, and C, the existence of a constant imply that there will be a cross point on the y-axis. And the value of each function at the cross point is exactly the same with the constant value. Finding the slope is uh, also particularly important, especially to know the shape of a function better. A curve may have just one slope, which is the gradient of the function in constant and linear function. The slope can also be decreasing or increasing following the increase in x, just like in a quadratic function and other function in our diagram, bar diagram A and C. It can also have both decreasing and increasing slope segments, just like in a cubic function. And lastly, as we will later elaborate more when discussing the optimization problem, 
just like uh, finding slope, finding the stationary point could, could uh, get us the information of a function's curve uh, better. Okay, so that's all my presentation. Hope you can uh, comprehend all the explanation. And of course, you will only get better if you work and do exercise more in this subject. And see you in uh, other video, video presentation of mathematical economics. Thank you very much for the attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.